We've been battling stomach bugs, flus, all sorts, so we pretty much haven't explored Jaipur at all. We've just been staying in the hotels, resting and doing work, but it's finally time to see what it has to offer. Welcome to Jaipur, the third stop on the Golden Triangle tourist route. Also known as the Pink City with a population of 4.1 million and the capital of Rajasthan. We've been here for a few days already, staying at both a royal luxury hotel and an incredibly comfortable Indian homestay. Both highly recommended, check out those videos. But today, we found ourselves an awesome driver to take us to Jaipur's top tourist attractions. We've seen a couple of pictures of some of the monuments we're visiting today and they look incredible. I'm so excited to visit them finally. We have a driver that's taking us all around today. Very excited. Gate name Ajmeri Gate. So uh -huh. this gate here to start from, from the Pink City. Okay. You are welcome the Pink City. Thank you. Welcome. Wow, it really is. It's like red and pink everywhere. And you know why pink color? Sandstone. Sandstone? No, actually, Jaipur King, friend of the British friend, the name of the Prince Albert. That time King thinks our friend is coming. I want to something special. Then King worker tell them King inside city make a pink color. When you make a pink color, then pink city looking so beautiful. King like very much. Yeah. Then King say all the time make a pink color. No any the color change. Okay. That's why the pink city. Uh, Maharaja Girls High School. Look at the name of this school. <gasps> mm. We've actually officially started the tour and we've just entered one of the seven gates into the pink city. And no cap, I think Jaipur might be my favorite city so far. It is amazing. The architecture, the colors, the design. They so many things to look at and it's so photographic. <gasps> I love it. Only passing for the king or king family. First stop is the beautiful city palace which lies at the heart of Jaipur and it was the administrative and ceremonial seat of the Maharaja of Jaipur. So yeah, let's go there now. Excited! If Red wasn't still feeling sick, we would have done the Royal Palace exclusive tour which costs around 3 to 5 thousand rupees per person. It's a private tour of the Royal Residence with a personal guide and our friends highly recommended it. Instead, we went with the composite tour which was around 700 rupees for a tour of the courtyards, Jai Garth and Royal Cenotaphs. So the king, this is the king, he's here, uh, he's 24 years old, so good looking. Hopefully we get to see him, but we know he's here because there's two flags flying. Goodness, that was so awesome. I'm so sad we couldn't phot photograph that for you. It's like all the old royal robes and dresses and freaking, oh my gosh, it was beautiful. There's even one from China and from Russia. Hey chap, wasn't that so cool? Cashmere, silk, real gold. May I press the button or it's okay? It's ready going. It's ready right going. Hold a second now. Okay, right now I'm looking at the biggest pot in the world, yeah. made out of pure silver. silver. 350 kilograms? 345 kilograms. Okay. The king was so lavish, he wanted to take his own water from India all the way to England in these big, big pots. They carry over 2,000 liters of water. How insane. So entrance on this tour was 700 rupees each and then you can opt to get your own guide if you want which is another 400 rupees just for the whole tour and we're doing about a 35 minute tour but you can go up to an hour there's no limitation on the time it just depends on you as with most tours we got taken to a small shop selling pashmina wool products where they tried to sell us their overpriced stuff for what felt like 30 minutes 
Apart from this, the tour was definitely worth it though. We also feel hiring the guide was worth it too. He can assist you in taking some photos and give you a more detailed understanding of what the history and the significance of the palace was. You want to go tattoo cafe? Yes, yes, please. So now we've been told to come to this cafe called Tattoo Cafe, which is right across from Hawa Mahal, our next stop. And yeah, it's right across the road, it's great. Yeah. So while we're waiting for our food, I'm going to tell you a little bit about Hawa Mahal, which is right behind us. So basically it is still within the palace complex. It was just a short drive around the corner it's at the edge. It's a palace built of red stone and pink stone. So it's actually not painted as far as I know, like the rest of the city. It was built in 1799 by the founder of Jaipur's grandson. This was designed specifically for these royal queens to be able to watch the daily life down below and to watch the festivals without being seen by the public because they had to follow very strict rules called purda, which, or purda, I don't know if I'm saying it right, which prevented, which forbade them from being seen by the public without a covering over their face. So they would sit in the little windows there, you can see them, you can't even see in, and they would watch. I think it's beautiful, it's stunning. The architecture is so impressive. That was a really good meal at the Tattoo Cafe, can highly recommend you try it out. I think the total for two meals and two drinks was 1,300 rupees. Oh, okay, okay. They just fled to build this one. Okay. Something I'm finding very interesting here in India is they really love their pigeons, like they feed them stickened like bags and bags of seeds and back home we actually despise pigeons like they're the rats of the sky to us so it's very interesting here that they look after their pigeons in Agra the guy was telling us old Ankit he was saying they do a little bit of gambling with the pigeons yes so the pigeons they'll like have their own group of pigeons and then they send them up in the sky Sometimes when the pigeons forget where their home is and they land at the other guy's home, then that guy gets to keep those pigeons and then he must pay money to the dude that got his pigeons to get them back. So that's how they, like, it's a little bit of gambling in the pigeon industry. <laughs> Exploring the roads, we're seeing a couple of camels here and there, which is quite cool. Uh, apparently Rajasthan has quite a big camel population and I guess it makes sense since a lot of the Arabians uh, Persians came down from the north into India many years ago. Yeah, this is the city of the cows and the camels. <laughs> They're just everywhere. They're so cute. Next stop is the Amber Fort, which is apparently an incredibly beautiful place, according to Clary. Yeah, according to Google. Inside is actually really good. Sorry, you can't see. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. Thank you. And outside, your life never no, thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
because he's such a cute monkey, but damn, he's naughty and he's missing one arm. But he literally just jumped on these motorbikes, two of them in a row, and like pushed them over on purpose. Flippin' naughty. That was here in so when was this built? 1599. Yeah, 1599. Yeah, I don't suppose that's, that's a new. Otherwise, it would be almost one of the oldest coffee shops on earth, I'm sure. <laughs> when you come here, you're going to be saying no to a lot of things. Hi. One of the things is hawkers are everywhere selling all sorts of things. Number two, guides, 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 and more guides. Everyone wants to be your guide. It's up to you if you want to take a guide. Most of them are, you know, able to speak English. I don't think any other languages. Yeah, they're there and then there's tons of curio shops on your way out as with most tourist attractions. Tons of shops to buy things at. Entrance to the palace where we are now was uh, 500 rupees per person. And we did not choose a guide. We just have these boards all over the place. And you can just read and see the history for yourself. So I won't lie, this has been one of the most annoying experiences we've had in India so far. People have been harassing us. There's been tour guides that have offered us their services and when you say no, they have such an attitude and one of them spat on red. So I don't know if I can actually recommend this place. It's beautiful, but it's being ruined by so many of the locals, unfortunately. It's a real freaking pity. I hate when this happens because history is kind of like not even your focus anymore. It's more just like getting through the crowds and through the rude people and saying no thank you all the time, trying to be so polite and yet they still have the biggest attitudes. Yeah, and there's even signs that say you should complain to somebody about the hawkers here. So then you know it's a problem. Certainly a beautiful place, but unlike the, the agrofort, it's not really regulated and looked after, especially with regards to who they're letting into the compound and who can be allowed to bother the tourists. It's very overwhelming. So just be warned, um, it is a bit of a fiasco. So come if you want, but it's not at the top of our list of recommendations. Experience yeah, today. that's fine. It yeah, happens. of course. My guests have a bad experience, then I am sad. Oh no, oh, don't. Yeah, don't worry don't about worry. it. Don't worry. This is don't do it. For yeah. the, like a bad experience about like a uh, you know the reputation of the reputation. Yeah, the yes. reputation of uh, Rajasthan and Jaipur. Yes. Yeah. We out of the chaos and being hassled. Um, I just want to say that it is very, very beautiful there. The, I think it was his room that was just covered in mirror work. It was so unique. I've never seen something like that before. And this fort was so big. You could tour even more, go on and on and on. You could spend like, like two to three hours there, I rate. Unfortunately, we're trying to catch sunset at our next destination. So we're like panicking. But uh, yeah, I do think I would recommend it, but maybe try and go early, early morning when there's not a lot of people there. And that way you don't have the hawkers harassing you, the monkeys trying to kill you, and the locals asking for photos every two meters. So yeah, do go. And I think it's actually really good to get a guide or a driver that will just be ready to pick you up as soon as you, you're done there and take you to the next place. It's been so, so efficient to have Sadiq. So thank you Sadiq, thank you for your time. If you want to maybe use Sadiq in the future when you are in Jaipur, we will leave his WhatsApp and contact details to his TripAdvisor page down in the description so you can go check him out. Final stop here in Jaipur, it's Nahagar Fort. 
Um, we're at the viewpoint, to be honest, we didn't even look at the fort. We just came straight to the viewpoint to come and see the city and watch the sunset here. That's what a lot of people recommend. Apparently the fort isn't actually um, looked after that well and it's not as pretty as Amber Fort. So, yeah, this is what makes it unique. It just overlooks the entire city. And apparently it used to be like a defense circle for the entire city of Jaipur. That's about all I know about this one, unfortunately. <laughs> sound of hundreds of mosques spread across Jaipur doing the prayer at 7 p.m. sharp. Wow, it's amazing. <laughs> Love. <laughs> So we are in the fort after all, we just quickly popped in after the sunset. It's actually really beautiful in here still. That's tobacco. People have been spitting tobacco in this monument. Can you believe it? That's going to be the end of today's adventures in Jaipur. We really enjoyed it here. The city has so much beautiful architecture and colors and stuff to offer. But we are off to Delhi in the next video. We're going to spend a few days there and then we're off to the north, Leh and Ladakh. So stay tuned for those videos. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. If you do like it, don't forget to give it a like and subscribe. Goodbye. Bye.